Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity that I'm uh, allowed to speak to you today. So the title of my subject is uh, Internet of Things, Relevant Data Aggregation Technology for the Trusted Smart Statistics. But I would like to have a review about, um, about a certain event which took place in September last week. This was the so-called red carpet event from Datacon, so from my company. And uh, we discussed with politicians, we've discussed with uh, representatives uh, from authorities, from um, the universities and also from the society. <clears throat> we've discussed the European path to digitization. What is the digital path to digitization? How did we discuss that? So we had several groups where we discussed topics like IoT-enabled ecosystems. <clears throat> we were talking about innovation hubs. So what is uh, the meaning of innovation for our society and for the European path, as well as mobility. You know the story about autonomous driving vehicles and about e-mobility. <clears throat> then we were discussing also about new work. So what happens with the employees? What happens with us, with the people? How do we have to change in times of digitization our behavior and our work? As well as the customer. So the customer is giving us the drum beat. They are changing. They have a different behavior, for example, in buying things and also in, use, in, in the usage of things. And this drives uh, also the digital change in Europe. Of course, we have physical and digital connectivity. You might have heard about the story about 5G and about the introduction of 5G. Is it fast enough? Is it the right technology about that? Oh, let's say for the digital, um, for the digital uh, way in Europe. And of course, artificial intelligence as a key driver technology for getting new insights and uh, using mathematical algorithms. But I think all of you are quite familiar with the topic of artificial intelligence. So what, come, what, uh, what did we find out? So first of all, <clears throat> Europe has a different, um, different framework which is the GDPR. So the GDPR focuses on the protection of personal data, which is different from those of America. So the Local Patriot Act allows authorities, for example, to access company data. And in China, this is of course totally different again, because there we have the total surveillance um, state uh, of surveillance of, for example, the people, but also of machines. Because data is not allowed to leave the country in China totally different from uh, the European or from the American uh, way of uh, digitization. Okay, so what did we find out? The European way is digital re-engineering of the existing infrastructure and of the existing economy, so digitize the existing, and IoT-based ecosystems. So IoT will be one of the major key drivers for the digitization in Europe. The Americans say, well, we prefer the Silicon Valley model. Creative, uh, creative destruction uh, and disruption. So if it is not uh, worth to survive, kill it. And um, from the economy uh, perspective, of course. And um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and in China, innovation and competitiveness through strong protectionism. So China invests. 30 billion euro or dollar, don't know um, which currency, but doesn't matter, it's much more money than Europe. Yeah? And only in the city or in the region of Beijing. So it's, uh, let's say, not comparable somehow with Europe. So China is moving strong ahead in terms of using data and getting new insights and new knowledge, generating new knowledge out of data. And this is, of course, something where we have to deal with. So the European path, digital re-engineering and uh, IoT-based ecosystem, this is uh, the topic in Europe which we see as one of the major, major driving factors. Let's try to find out what exactly means Internet of Things, how is it defined. So digitization and the Internet of Things are both parts of the same concepts. They go hand in hand. And it means that everyday physical objects are connected to the Internet. The information about the object is available in the Internet. And it means that the object is then able to identify themselves and to communicate with other devices. And it means also that the physical objects 
gets an additional value because it's not anymore just a physical object, it's also a physical object which is represented somehow in the internet with its current state, for example, moving or standing or uh, on and off or uh, whatever status indicates the operation of a device. It means also that the object is not any longer referring to only one owner, so a person or a company or a thing, but is linked to the surrounding objects. And this is now, of course, exactly the uh, home turf of all the statistics, because you're now able to combine data from different sources and, for example, to get out uh, new insights of data correlations. Yeah? So plenty of possibilities. And this concept enables the integration into cross-industry value chains and also in new data-based business models. And this is the key driver, this is the new oil, which, is, uh, which has been set by my boss, which is Tim Hötkes, so the boss of Deutsche Telekom. Datacon belongs to Deutsche Telekom Group. And uh, so data becomes the new oil of the 21st century. Yeah? Key driver for new business models. Let's have a deeper look because we saw already that some of these business models already, um, are already arising in the market. <clears throat> so let's have a look. What is the technical setup of an IoT solution? Uh, it is like following, you have the uh, connected asset. You have a connected asset like a container, which we have heard uh, today already by Professor Zwick. Containers are uh, connected in the future or are already connected and will be more and more in the future. Uh, could be also a car, could be also a washing machine, could be a smart meter, could be something. We need to have a gateway and this gateway is able to connect through the internet to the cloud. This gateway is more or less intelligent. Could be a thump engine, which is just proceeding the data, pushing the data away. Could be also an intelligent one, doing, also so, doing already some pre-processing on the device, combining already data, calculating, processing already data, and moving it up to the internet. We need to have the sensor data coming from the current device and need to connect it, for example, via a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth network, or could also be directly integrated into the device. So the concentrator of the device itself then pushes the data through an infrastructure, to a network, to a transmission network. And this transmission network is, of course, the basis for digitization. Could be wireless, for example, 5G, the discussion. Could also be used by 4G, LTE, everyone knows, everyone has somewhere in, in, your, in your pockets, in, on your smartphones. Could also be the good old um, uh, uh, G GPRS network. A GPRS network still existing and uh, many cases we have just uh, very few information, only uh, let's say a, a, a few bytes which have to be transmitted. But there's an end of lifetime, so the GPRS network will be substituted by new technologies like narrowband IoT or by Zigfox or by LoRa. So there are different types of infrastructure alternatives uh, to 5G. Of course, we need to have a secure uh, transmission, as we have just heard by, um, by the previous speaker. It is absolutely essential to have an encrypted transmission. Could be done by a blockchain technology, could be done by VPNs, could be done by encryption of the data. But must be secured, and otherwise it's of course not a data of trust which can be used for trusted smart statistics, that's clear. Then we need to have a data center. We need to push the data in a central data center store. So it um, could be um, somewhere in a public cloud, could also be in a private cloud, could be on a subsidiary of a company, could also be somewhere on, um, on, in the place of a, of a cloud provider. And this infrastructure will never change. So this infrastructure is always IoT infrastructure, connecting everything and putting the data, as before seen from the definition, somewhere d uh, shows up the uh, physical behavior of that, uh, um, of that physical object. And once it is stored, it can now be used for different use cases and for different applications. So for example, by user apps and portals, so you can immediately see the behavior of a physical object outside. But could also be used for client systems. So for example, directly integrated into an ERP environment. ERP is something like SAP, you might have heard about that, as well as CRM or workforce management systems. So you, uh, let's say a technician gets immediately a notification about a service which is necessary, for example, of an elevator, it's damaged, you immediately get the message, you know exactly what to do. 
predictive maintenance is also uh, a buzzword coming out of this discussion. Um, by the way, the client systems, um, in many cases, uh, depending on the overarching enterprise architecture. So another buzzword is enterprise architecture management. And this is one of the key drivers for digitization today in the society and in the companies. You need to have a plan, you need to have an enterprise architecture to get the real value out of an IoT value chain. Otherwise, you have something and it's good to see, but you are somehow sticking into a proof of concept, but you do not proceed and uh, put the, um, put the, or, ta or take the IoT solution into your daily operations. Must be integrated into an overarching enterprise architecture. And, of course, making use out of the <coughs> IoT generated data with artificial intelligence methodology. So big data, algorithms, pattern recognition, machine learning, um, deep learning. So all the buzzwords that, uh, and all the, uh, the methodologies that you're quite familiar with. And with the help of artificial intelligence and with the help of different data sources and correlations between the data sources, we will have a new jump into a new, let's say, into a new quality, um, for example, of products. We know exactly what were the conditions of the machine producing, for example, a washing machine or producing a TV or producing whatever. You know exactly because of, uh, let's say, if you have a regular pattern, you know exactly is there a slight deviation from it or not. Does it affect the product quality or not? You know that just by, um, by pattern recognition. And now we come to the new business models, and the new business models are the new data marketplaces, making data accessible to enable um, data-driven business models. A car manufacturer knows exactly the value of its data. For example, BMW, since 2008, they are collecting data from telemetry data uh, from a car. And um, now they have detected that this data is probably of interest for smart cities or probably for an energy, for a utility provider. There was a message that VW generates or aggregates data for uh, Tenet. Tenet is um, a, um, um, a high voltage carrier, a high voltage distributor utility in Germany. And Tenet needs this information to balance their power grid because they need to know, is it raining or not? Uh, what is the temperature? And uh, what are the uh, environmental conditions? And now, a car manufacturer gets a new business model selling data for totally different other uh, ecosystems. Let's see how this shows up. So this is a central data hub model. A central data hub where data is accessible and where data is getting pushed from totally different sources. For example, from the asset, from the smart meter or from the container. The container pushes the data into the central data hub via M2M technology, machine-to-machine -machine communication technology. We have also, um, for example, the um, end user who uses an app, for example, to watch out where's my asset. So we have an interaction between the end user and the asset via a central data hub. Not a direct communication because then no one knows what happens in the interaction between user and, and, and asset. Must be led uh, via a central data hub. Then we have the consumer, the, uh, the, uh, which, who uses, for example, different kind of tools. So if this is a car, this could be a car dealer, or this could also be a uh, fleet management company. And this is the user who drives the car, which is owned by the, by the fleet management uh, uh, companies. Right? And we have, of course, the third-party suppliers. We have those who are getting access to the data, of course, it must be allowed, otherwise GDPR, think about that. It's not allowed to just to get uh, some kind of data. And uh, they are creating the apps which are, which are somehow produced for the, um, for the end users. And the asset itself has been produced by the Industry 4.0 stuff. So it means that they are in the uh, PLM, product lifecycle management cycle, they are uh, already existing um, digital models from the asset, but also digital models of the smart production machines, of the tooling machines, which have been used, for example, to bend the metal or to produce the assets. There are also interesting data coming from smart logistics and also from a smart after sales service. And all this data is now accessible via a data hub or via a data exchange and can be then and, uh, can be then um, uh, used for a, um, 
uh, for mm -hmm. a uh, cross vertical or for a cross uh, ecosystem data exchange. For example, by direct coupling, so that all the automotives or all the smart cities or all the airports also have this kind of data. And they need to get access about that. And now we have the building of uh, the creation of new business models, so data exchanges, new players enter the market, make use uh, of IoT data, and use them for selling them, for example, to other ecosystems. Trans ecosystem interconnection, that's the point. So what is the role that official statistics can play? So we have, for example, uh, the autonomous driving example. So um, without let's say just relying on internal sensors of a car is not enough to enable autonomous driving. You need a supporting infrastructure. For example, coming from, from, uh, vehicle, uh, coming from buildings. You have in-vehicle sensors, you have physical barriers, the vehicle then can then therefore predict just a few seconds at high speed, and that's why you need to have external sensors supporting infrastructure, supporting sensors, which help the car to, de to decide to lower the speed, for example. And official statistics can act as an enabler for autonomous driving and also for smart cities. Because smart cities, they have to, they have to support autonomous driving by the supporting infrastructure. And official statistics can help by reading out, for example, building information management data. Is the building already equipped? Is it already smart? Yes or no? What about the, all, the, uh, all the buildings which are used or owned by the state? Could be easily, uh, could be easily um, upgraded with a building information management infrastructure to support, for example, autonomous, um, autonomous driving. And uh, statistics from the official, uh, the official statistics can help in that, in that way. There are already data marketplaces and data sources available. So we did a quick research and we found out that there are already data marketplaces existing. For example, industry data marketplaces or mobility data marketplaces. Industrial data space, data intelligence hub from Datacom or Davix. Also a provider for, um, for uh, marketplaces. User-generated uh, user data. For example, photo platforms, social media. By the way, do you know what is the uh, most interesting subject in a restaurant? I, I, I just, I've just heard it today in the, in the news. What is the most, most important subject in a restaurant? It's the dish. So if the, if the steak is perfect, everyone is getting a photo and posting it somewhere on a photo platform, which means it's also, let's say, interesting for a restaurant, let's say, to, uh, to, to engineer its food and to have a, let's say, a nice appearance of that food because it's shared somewhere in the social media. So you know a lot by just asking the photo platforms um, about the most interesting subjects. Transaction-generated data, of course, uh, re real estates or e-commerce platforms, but, and this is the IoT aggregated sensor data, which is coming, for example, from building, from cars, or from um, different other uh, systems. So car, car, uh, car data is, in my eyes, a very useful source for this official statistic. So, to summarize it, there's a gold digger mood around IoT-based data, but there's hardly any orientation. So the ecosystem is driving very fast, very economically, very, with a lot of power, and uh, orientation is needed. And that's why we have to sit together and discuss about the different possibilities, and probably also by the, um, by the uh, enablements to get access to the data, for example, for those, from those data out of companies which need to have money for it, but probably needs to also get a little bit of support by laws and by directives coming from the government. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.